After spending more than three months in the depths of the ocean, SpaceX has finally provided an update on the status of Booster B-11. This resilient booster has certainly earned the title of a warrior. But what exactly happened to B-11? We'll dive into these details shortly. In other news, SpaceX is currently dealing with a legal issue involving a lawsuit over land in the South Texas area, which could impact future operations. Meanwhile, on the global front, China's attempt to replicate SpaceX's reusable rocket technology has hit a snag with a recent test ending in failure. Let's explore all of this and more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. More than three months have passed since Flight 4, and in addition to waiting for Flight 5, many are eagerly anticipating updates on the recovery of the hardware from the previous flight. This interest is understandable, as Flight 4 marked the first time both Starship stages successfully landed, a significant milestone compared to previous missions. Recently, Elon Musk shared images of Booster B-11 accompanied by the message, Starship Super Heavy Booster Flight 4. The images show that the booster sustained significant damage and is no longer intact, likely due to the impact of the flight itself as well as months spent in the ocean. Nevertheless, it's a remarkable image. The image specifically captures the aft section of B-11, along with a few smaller pieces from the upper parts. Much of the internal structure is missing, leaving only the outer shell and the engine ring system visible. Of the original engines, only 14 from the outer ring remain and most have been deformed into various shapes. Inside, the exposed wiring and fuel systems show extensive damage as well. This damage aligns with the earlier landing images of B-11 where one side of the booster appeared to have been scorched. It's possible that some of the engines not visible in the current image were already damaged upon landing and the subsequent time in the sea likely caused parts to break away. The upper portion of the booster is also completely missing from the photo, though those parts may have been recovered earlier. In fact, earlier reports indicated that parts of B-11 had been retrieved. In a previous update, we mentioned the activities of the ship M-V Haas Ridgewind, which was tasked with picking up divers and operated in early September. This suggests that other parts of B-11 might have already been brought back. We will continue to provide updates on the status of the salvaged components, including the upper section of the booster and the S-29. Many are particularly interested in seeing the condition of S-29, especially after its forward flap burned during flight. In response to the tweet about B-11, Elon Musk commented, Fixer Upper, hinting at SpaceX's ongoing efforts to recover and analyze Flight 4's hardware. This recovery effort is crucial for SpaceX. As I've mentioned, this is the first time Starship's stages have landed successfully. SpaceX must capitalize on this opportunity by recovering parts for further analysis and future development. One of the key goals will be to examine the damage from the flight to understand what went wrong. While the ocean's effects may distort some of the findings, the data collected will still be invaluable. For instance, SpaceX can study why the engines became so deformed, which could lead to future design improvements. Additionally, as part of SpaceX's history of development, I hope they preserve these parts for display in a museum. They would serve as symbols of the early stages of Starship's evolution, particularly the advancements in reusability. It would also be fantastic if the insights gained from B-11 could be applied to Flight 5. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait another two months until late November for the next launch. While the delay is disappointing, it offers SpaceX more time to refine the Flight 5 hardware based on the data from Flight 4, potentially increasing the success rate of the upcoming mission. Yep. That will be when Super Heavy will return to Starbase and land on the Mechazilla arm. This mission is unprecedented and certainly extremely difficult, but if they can collect data from the previous flight, that will be the basis for them to prepare well for the feat. In addition, the B-11 recovery may also have a significant impact on the FAA. SpaceX has been constantly making arguments aimed at the FAA's process. They recently completed the full stack of Flight 5 hardware, and the recovery of the B-11 parts is also an important achievement for them to promote the progress of Starship. Of course, in the future, we won't want the hardware to return on a recovery ship. Instead, it needs to come back in other impressive ways, 
like landing on the Mechazilla arm, standing proudly on a drone ship, or an ocean platform. But after all, the return of B-11 is a major milestone for SpaceX's Starship this year. So please, welcome B-11 back home by responding with 11 in the comment section down below. Then like, share, and subscribe to our channel to continue following SpaceX's development journey. However, for SpaceX to fully realize its vision, there remains a long road ahead, particularly as they continue to face delays imposed by various organizations through regulations and lawsuits. Recently, a well-known company, Cards Against Humanity, yes, the party game with a humorous name, filed a lawsuit against SpaceX, accusing them of trespassing and damaging land the company purchased in 2017. They are seeking $15 million in compensation for the alleged harm. This land, located in Cameron County, was initially bought as part of an effort to oppose Donald Trump's plan to build a border wall between the U.S. and Mexico during his presidency. The campaign dubbed Cards Against Humanity Saves America attracted 150,000 supporters and raised $15 million to buy the land. Cards Against Humanity claims that SpaceX not only damaged the land, but also harmed the company's relationship with its supporters. They also allege that SpaceX offered less than half of the $15 million in compensation, which was rejected. It seems absurd that even a game company is now involved in hindering SpaceX's progress. This raises the question, is there an underlying force influencing both government agencies and private entities to slow down SpaceX at every turn, whether through investigations, flight delays, or legal actions? Meanwhile, it's noticeable that SpaceX's competitors appear unaffected. What could this suggest? Now, more than ever, these barriers need to be dismantled. Internal competition must be addressed so the focus can shift to national development. China is rising rapidly in the space race, and currently only SpaceX has the potential to help the U.S. stay ahead. It'd be disappointing if internal conflicts gave China the opportunity to surpass us. If you agree, type yes in the comment section. Speaking of China, let's shift our focus for an update on the recent failure of China's copycat rocket. Specifically, Deep Blue Aerospace, a Chinese company, reported that its first reusable rocket, Nebula 1, which runs on kerosene fuel, failed during its high-altitude vertical recovery test. The failure occurred in the final stage of the test, which lasted 179 seconds. The test prototype stood 21 meters tall and had a diameter of 3.35 meters. China's Asia spaceflight posted on X, while most parts of the test went as planned, the rocket landed a little too hard and collapsed. They further explained, two years ago, Nebula 1M seemed to suffer a hard landing, but Deep Blue never released the full footage or commented on it. It's good that they're being transparent this time. Nebula 1 slowed down to a hover, but the engine shut off at an unsafe height. Specifically, two of the rocket's engines failed before landing. As the rocket neared the landing zone, it fell abruptly, crashing violently and damaging the aft section and landing legs. However, videos and images of the entire preparation, launch, and landing process were released, showing that most of the flight, including the deceleration, appeared to go smoothly. Post-test images revealed that while the upper portion of the rocket seemed largely intact, the lower part was severely burned and damaged. Previously, investors and developers expressed confidence that by utilizing kerosene, methane, and liquid oxygen, they could reduce costs and create cleaner, more efficient rockets. The ultimate goal, to compete with SpaceX. Deep Blue Aerospace, along with many other Chinese startups, has adopted a copycat strategy in an attempt to push forward the commercial space industry and compete with the US, which is home to several strong private space companies. But as we've seen, developing rockets is no easy task. The recent failure of this test highlights that copying SpaceX's technology doesn't guarantee success. At best, it offers temporary gains. This underscores why SpaceX remains the dominant force in the rocket industry. Achieving their current level of expertise, particularly in landing and reusing rockets, required overcoming numerous challenges. But it's those very challenges that have made SpaceX stronger, continually driving innovation. The failure of Deep Blue Aerospace also reinforces that, at present, only SpaceX is well-positioned to outpace China in the space race. Technological obstacles, while significant, are less of a concern for SpaceX's engineers than the regulatory hurdles they currently face. While China may have failed in this instance, given time, they could certainly make progress. 
the U.S. must act quickly to implement reforms that support SpaceX as these reforms are key to ensuring the country maintains its lead in this increasingly competitive space race. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.